Hello, this will be a short video on Lambda functions and how they can interact with Control M from BMC software. So let's start out by talking a little bit about what Lambda functions are. So a Lambda function uh, basically is a serverless compute resource. Uh, so it's a compute platform that is stateless. And with that uh, environment or that compute resource that's stateless, it gives you the ability to execute code on there. And typically it's used in response to events. So like I said, the environment is stateless, but the data does not have to be for you know what you're running through here. So if you need persistent data, you could use some of the other AWS services, such as S3 buckets or the RDS services or any other non-relational database or ElastiCache or you know, other things that are out there. Um, these stateless servers, they, there is no affinity to the infrastructure. So what that means is you cannot log into that underlying host. So, you know, you wouldn't have the ability to go in and set different path variables or anything like that. You, you would have to do that in your uh, code itself. But these do offer the ability to do monitoring and logging. So with that, there's built in metrics that show the errors, the requests, uh, latency, and then throttling around uh, each one of the Lambda functions that run. And then also CloudWatch has built in logging uh, to this service as well. So just to wrap this up for the uh, little presentation part of this, the reason to use Lambda functions are to not have to manage servers, um, also to be able to scale that environment so that infrastructure that gets dynamically allocated, it's continuous uh, scaling uh, in the sense of if your program is running and it needs more horsepower, AWS will just grant that to it, uh, which you know you need to kind of be careful around, but uh, it does kind of grow as your program needs it. And then the third or kind of dovetailed uh, reason or benefit that you'd want to use this is to not have to maintain servers in your data center or virtual machines out in the cloud where they would be idle or cold, you know, where we're not utilizing them. So these are really just uh, a just-in-time compute resource that can be called by that function. And, you know, then once we're done with it, it's then decommissioned dynamically and we don't have to worry about it. Um, one thing I will mention on that too, before we move on to the demo part of this is those Lambda functions themselves get charged by the time that they're executing and they're broken down in 100 millisecond blocks. So, uh, you know, you only pay for the, the time that your programs are running. So let's hop out of here and I will start by going into AWS and just showing the services that are there. So if you go into the AWS console and then look under compute resources, that's where you'll find uh, the, the Lambda web interface where you can go in and see, you know, the different functions you've got created as well as a dashboard view that shows all the different monitoring and metric capabilities that we had out there. So you can see here that I've, I've had a few uh, executions running. And then I can also see any applications I have running out here, which are just a grouping of functions or the individual functions themselves. So here with the functions, if I click on one of these, I can see you know, how it's architected and, and then this is where you design them as well. So here with this one, I've built it so that there's a trigger off of a file arriving into a folder in an S3 bucket that then kicks off my ACB S3 trigger program. And then normally I can use the WYSIWYG editor here in the AWS console to edit my uh, code that I'm doing, but there are size limitations. And with this Python program, it is using a couple of different Python libraries. So my package is over that size uh, uh, recommendation here. So if I want to edit it, I just need to use an external editor and then save this as a zip file and then I can upload it to the Lambda function. So with this function, um, here's the code of what we're actually going to do. It's just going to do a RESTful call into an endpoint uh, that has control M running, uh, get our token. And then basically once it gets there, then it's going to do a run event and uh, put in an event called data pipeline underscore event with today's date value. And if I hop over into control M real quick, you can see that I have one of these that already exists. So I will delete that one out of here and now go back to the Lambda function. And then here, if I go to the test tab, then I can see, you know, 
the different events that are there. I can test that here and fire off the trigger, which then invokes the program. So here you can see that the program ran. It ran for um, 1241 milliseconds here. You can see the resources that got configured here, how long it was billed, um, and then how much memory uh, and duration it actually took to run this. You can also see the log output of what it actually did here. Um, so it, it's really comprehensive in showing you all that information. And then if we hop back over here to control M and scroll down, I have a lot of D's apparently. You can see why that's grayed out. If I hop out of condition, we go back into it. There we go. So now I just filtered this to see the one condition and you can see the data pipeline event that was uh, put in there for today's date value and then it went to my control M server here. So that's one way of using it where it's an external function calling to control M uh, where we can satisfy an event that then kicks off workload. Um, in addition to doing this, you could maybe order a folder of jobs. You could uh, change a variable value. You could, um, you know, fire off different rules or, or whatever we need to do uh, to get workload to work. But, you know, just a kind of simplistic approach to showing this with an event. Then the other side of how we could utilize this is there is a AWS job type inside of Control M that is uh, just there with the application pack. And with this control M job type, uh, one of the uh, different services that is there is a Lambda function. And with that, then you can uh, build a connection profile that has all your IAM authority to connect into AWS. And then once you have that uh, in place, then you can simply um, connect into AWS, see a listing of all of your functions that are available and then select the one that you want, or you could just, you know, type that here and um, put that in here as well. We do also look at version information. So uh, by default, it'll put dollar latest in here to run the latest version of that program. But if you want to use a different one, you know, you could obviously override that. And then with a Lambda function, you can also put the different payload here uh, to live with the job type, as well as any client context JSON that you want to uh, submit. Uh, and then basically that passes that along to the function when you initiate it. So um, just to give you kind of a real world example of that, you know, here's a flow where we are going to run uh, a Terraform plan to spin up some virtual machines. When that process gets done, then it's going to run another process to uh, stand up uh, Kubernetes pod. Then we're going to reach out and run uh, an AWS batch function, an AWS Lambda function, and an AWS step function and then do some more stuff downstream from that. But here's the function in the middle here. And you can look here that the um, Lambda function that we're calling is here. It's gonna run the dollar latest like we showed in the example of building the job. And then, you know, we would just execute this and then be able to see the visibility of running that execution here in Control M versus only being able to see it in AWS. So I hope this is helpful and uh, shows you what you can do uh, with this AWS service of Lambda functions. Thanks.